Good day, Math 30-2s. We close out chapter four with solving rational equations. Now, expressions are quite different because we have things like x minus six is an expression. There's no equal sign. This is an expression. It could represent a lot of things depending what x is. If x is 10, the expression has a value of 10 minus six, four. But an equation is different because we introduce something like equals five. And all of a sudden, x has a very defined value. The only thing that makes this equation true is an x value of 11. Equations have a defined answer, x equals number, which is very, very different than expressions, which are, are statements that could potentially have lots of values. So today we are solving rational equations and verifying that our answer is correct. And the key is often to get rid of those denominators. So our answers are going to look very, very, very different. But in the back of our mind, what we're looking for is asking the question, what value would make this equation true? Now as a reminder, going back to grade 7, we first learned type 1 equations where we have one operation to get us to our answer. Now without guessing and checking, I mean, I could say 9 minus 3 is 6 and guess that x is 9, but we can use opposite operations to get us there. So the opposite of what's happening to x will get us there. What's the opposite of subtracting 3? Adding 3. If we add 3 to each side, this zeroes out or becomes nothing, and the right side becomes a 6 plus a 3, a 9. You can double check by saying 9 minus 3 is 6. Yeah, it is. So opposite operations is the key. 2 times x is 10. Opposite of multiplying by that 2 is to divide by 2. And in doing so, we have a 10 divided by 2 is a 5. Is 2 times 5 10? Yes. When we get more complicated, we have to think a little bit almost in the opposite direction of bed mass. So we're going to get rid of that addition and subtraction first. So here I'm going to add a 1 and leave us with a 3x that equals a 12. Divide both sides by a 3 and leave us with a 4. Is 3 times 4, 12, minus 1, 11, going to equal 11? Yes. So x is a 4. The opposite of x divided by 2 is to times by 2. And this leaves us with an x value of 6. So thinking opposite operations now. Now when it comes to um, one of the skills needed for later on is factoring. Now trinomial factoring hasn't been examined since last year in probably the quadratics unit. And, and there are many ways to factor and I'll remind us of factoring trinomials in one specific way. But it's not necessarily the only way. Now one way to factor trinomials is to write the factors of the first term and the last term vertically. So what multiplies to x squared? x times x. There's really not a lot of choice. What multiplies to a 6? Now there is a few choices, 6 times 1 and a 3 times 2, but we're also looking for a negative 6. So that could be a negative 3 times positive 2, or positive 3 times negative 2. I'm going to do this wrong the first time, and then show us a correct way the second time. So if I choose a 6 and a 1, and I make the 1 a negative, and a 6 a positive, there is a way of asking, is this the right way to do it? Well, a way that we can check is to multiply the 6 diagonally down, and say 6 times x is 6x. X x times the negative 1 is a negative 1x. And if we add those two together, we get a 6x minus a 1x is a 5x. If we ask, is that 5x the middle term, which it is not, we would say, hmm, this was not the right answer. Essentially what we're doing is we're saying, is x plus 6 times x minus 1 the correct factors. Basically what we're doing is we're taking this x times the negative 1 arrow 
and the x times the 6 arrow. And we're doing part of the expanding process for a binomial times a binomial and questioning whether the middle term is going to be a negative 1x or a 5x. We basically guessed to see if these were the factors, um, and in this case they weren't. The correct answer, if we try a different set of factors, is if we were to try a negative 3 and a positive 2, and we do this diagonal check. Negative 3 times x, x times 2, 2x, add those together, and we get a negative 1x. And a negative 1x is that middle term, which is correct. So the factors are x plus the 3, or x minus a 3, and the x plus the 2, the horizontal factors. Try this one more time. 3x times x are the only factors for 3x squared. Negative 4 has a couple options. Um, let's try, um, it could be a 4 and a 1, or a 1 and a 4, or a 2 and a 2. Let's just try a 2 and a 2. Some people call this approach a bit lucky because sometimes your first guess, you're lucky. Now, I do need to make a negative 4 in the middle. So with a little bit of foresight, I can say, if I make this a negative and this a positive, because all of this has to be negative, I'm going to get a negative 6x and a positive 2x, and that's going to give me what I want. So with a bit of practice, we can avoid trying too many different combinations and make it work. 3x times negative 2 is a negative 6x. And if you wanted, there is a factoring video tutorial on the channel as well. This gives us our negative 4x, which matches the middle. Great. Our factors are horizontally that 3x plus a 2 and an x minus a 2. Remember, the factors are horizontal. Occasionally, these numbers, which seem like they all are getting quite a bit larger, sometimes they actually have a factor 2 that can be taken out of them, or a factor x, or something that can be taken out. I can actually take out a 2, leaving us with a 2x squared minus a 7x plus a 3, making this have some smaller numbers. I can not worry about the 2 for a moment and let it hang out while we look at 2x times x and a 3 times a 1. I'm thinking about a 1 and a 3, both negative because somehow I need to get to a negative, but their product is a positive, and a negative 6x, negative 6x minus 1x will get us to the number we want. So these are going to be our factors without writing too much down. There's a 2 hanging out in front of our trinomial, and that trinomial has factors 2x minus 1 and an x minus a 3. So this actually has three factors. One of them came out as a GCF, and the remaining ones factored as a pair of binomials. Now for solving rational equations, there are some steps, and one of the biggest things to remember is to factor first if possible. We want to be able to see the parts that we want to get rid of. And then we're going to be multiplying each term on top only to cancel out some denominators. Let's show what that looks like. Um, we want to see what our denominator is at its core, and this one is simple that it's only an x. Now typically you would think about this as a cross multiplying question and you would move that x up here and you're sort of thinking about it with some, some tricks or some strategies. So the x would move up there and that's what you would end up with. Now cross multiplying is a bit of a trick. Why does it work? Well what we're actually trying to do is we're multiplying both sides by something to cancel out the denominator. If I multiply this side by an x and I multiply this side by an x, these cancel out. The effect is the x has sort of switched up to the top left position, leaving us with a 3 times an x. That equals 6. This is a far more simple equation to solve than the initial one. But again, what we did is we multiplied the top by the same value to cancel out the denominator. So let's try this again um, in a setup that's similar to cross multiplying but approaching it a bit more differently. I'm looking at an x over here and an x plus 2 over here, and we're asking ourselves the question, what do we have to multiply both sides by that would cancel out the denominator? And what if you had said x plus
plus 2 is the lowest common denominator. Is it enough if I multiply this side by an x plus 2 and this side by an x plus 2? Is that enough to cancel out both denominators? You know what? x plus 2, x plus 2 cancels. Awesome. x and the x plus 2, those don't cancel. This x is adding with the 2 so it doesn't get to cancel. I need more. I need to have my lowest common denominator be an x times an x plus 2. So I have to multiply both sides by an x, x plus 2, and an x, x plus 2. They each get to cancel out their own things. The right side cancels out the binomial, the left side cancels out the x's. We're left with things. On the left side, we still have a 5 and an x plus a 2. And the right side, we have a 4x, and that's all. Arguably, this is a bit more clean than the initial question with fractions. The 5x can go into the bracket, and we can even make this a bit more nice. 5x plus a 10 equals a 4x. Solving this question involves getting the like terms onto the same side. There's a 5x, there's a 4x. If I subtract a 4x from this side to over here, those will cancel out and we're left with a 5x minus 4x is a 1x. If I subtract a 10 over to the right side, those cancel out, and we're left with a negative 10 on the right. x value is negative 10. If you're a little unsure if it worked out or not, you can always check by plugging your answer back into the original question. The original question was 5 divided by x is equal to 4 divided by an x plus a 2. Let's plug in a negative 10 to see what happens. Is 5 divided by negative 10 going to equal 4 divided by negative 10 plus 2? Well, 5 divided by negative 10 is a negative 0 0.5, or 1 half. The right side is a 4 divided by a negative 8. 4 divided by a negative 8? Well, a negative 0 0.5 definitely equals a negative 0 0.5, which means you bet that answer works. So I'm confident enough that this is a true answer and I shouldn't cross it off and say something isn't right. Here's one that's kind of similar to try where you're avoiding cross multiplying but it involves multiplying both sides. We're going to step things up just a little bit and look at maybe an example 3 with a level 3 difficulty. Now a level 3 difficulty is entirely arbitrary and I just made up that level 3 rating. So our lowest common denominator initially looks a little bit ambiguous, but I do re remember telling myself that um, there is some factoring that might make things a little bit more clean. So in factoring this bottom left, I can take an x out as a greatest common factor and leave us with an x minus a 3. The right side has an x minus 3 and uh, an x. I do see an x, an x an x minus 3, an x minus 3, I really only see two different things, an x and an x minus 3. That is our lowest common denominator. We can just try to put that in um, on each side and see if it will cancel things out. But if we multiply the left side by an x, x minus 3, and then multiply this right side by the whole right side by an x, x minus 3, everything is balanced. Now, I am going to multiply this onto both of those. So what you're actually going to see in the next step is an x minus 3 twice. One here and one here on that side. So it looks like there's more on the right side than the left, but trust me, they are balanced because we multiplied both sides by a single x, x minus 3. This one is getting distributed into a binomial, though. So when we rewrite this, we can see that there is going to be this x, x minus 3 that will get cancelled out. There is going to be this 6 and the x and the x minus 3. Here's the x minus 3. And here is a 5 over x and an x and an x minus 3. As you do this enough, you start to see some strategies and make it a little bit easier for yourself. x is cancel. x minus 3 is cancel. x minus 3 is cancel x's cancel. What we should see is no more denominators. What we're left with is an 18 on the left side. We're left with a 6x in that middle on the right. 
and a minus 5 bracket and x minus 3. Every time we're subtracting a bunch of stuff, we have to be so careful that that negative 5 is distributing in. 18 is a 6x minus a 5x plus a 15. That's a common mistake many people will make. Now the 6x minus the 5x is a 1x. The 15 can subtract, minus 15, minus 15, leaving us with a 3 that equals that x. And that is our final answer. And I'm not really boxing it up just yet because I'm a little bit nervous only because when I looked at the original question, I saw right here an x minus 3. What's our non-permissible value? 0. And a 3 minus 3 would be a problem. If x was a 3, that would be a problem. What's the answer? 3. The answer is a problem? Well, if the answer is a restriction or non-permissible value, there is no solution. We can also say that the solution is extraneous. But it's fair to say this answer doesn't really work. That's why it is so, 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 so important to actually check your work and be mindful of your result. Don't always trust that your answer works because if you made a small mistake or if the answer is a non-permissible value, there actually is not a solution. So we've got a last example for you to try. Um, this one has a 2, a 4, and a 3, and if you multiply each top by your lowest common denominator or something that would cancel it out, um, in this case a 12, everything should cancel out nicely. Now a good strategy, but without doing all this question, is to multiply every top by a 12 and start doing some cancelling. Leaving us with a 12 divided by 2, 6x minus a 12 divided by 4 is a 3 with that x plus 5 and on the right side 4 is left over times that 4 is a 16 and we can continue working through the last few steps of that but again I multiplied all three terms by that same number just like up here after this distributed in after this distributed in there was that common denominator on every term. So a uh, last one to try before maybe a problem solving question is the <gasps> level 4 difficulty. So level 4 difficulty involves looking at that lowest common denominator as I see a 6, I see an x, and I see an x plus 1, all very different terms. And we multiply every top by a 6x x plus 1 a 6, x, x plus 1, 6, x, you guessed it, x plus 1. Things cancel. x and x cancel. x plus 1, x plus 1. 6, 6. Let's see what's left over. A 1 times a 6 and an x plus 1. Subtracting a 1 times a 6x, that's a 6x. Uh, we're equaling this to an x times an x plus 1. This is what's left over. At least there's no fraction. So this 6 can distribute in, leaving us with a 6x plus a 6 minus a 6x that equals an x squared minus uh, x squared plus x. So it's good now to try to solve this equation. But what I'm noticing is maybe this 6x minus 6x can cancel. That's kind of handy. And maybe I can move everything over to this side, giving us with an x squared plus an x minus a 6 that equals a 0. Now what we're left over for the first time in this course is a trinomial that equals 0. This is why we're factoring at the beginning of the class, because for the first time we are expected to factor trinomials only when we're solving equations. So only when we're solving rational equations will we be expected to potentially factor a trinomial. 
We do have the quadratic formula, which is good to reattempt to get our answers. Um, we can also factor. So I'll show a quick um, idea of each case. Uh, if you do factor this like we had talked about earlier, we would be left with an x plus a 3 times an x minus a 2, giving us two solutions. When does this equal 0? When x is a negative 3. When does this equal 0? When x is a 2. So these are the two answers to this equation. There are two answers to this quadratic. If we had used the quadratic formula, what we're doing is we're taking these a value of 1, the b value, which is in front of the x, that's a 1, and taking the c value, which is, in, is the last term, this negative 6, and we're plugging this into the quadratic formula. So we're saying x is negative b value plus or minus the big square root of that b squared minus 4ac, and this is all divided by a 2 times the a. So we have a negative 1 plus or minus the big square root of 1 squared is a 1. Now there's a subtracting of a negative 24. Subtracting a negative 24 is like adding a 24. 1 plus 24 is 25. And this is all divided by a 2. So we have a negative 1 plus or minus a 5 divided by a 2. So 5 plus a negative 1, that's a 4 divided by 2, 2. A negative 5 minus 1 is a negative 6 divided by 2, that's a negative 3. Those are the 2x values, just like we had over here. So your ability to solve algebraically this remaining quadratic equation is either factoring or the quadratic formula. We should be able to, in this course, use one of these two strategies. There is one example that I'm going to leave you with to try, and this suggests in a problem-solving context that over the distance of 800 kilometers, the average speed of a small airplane is six times faster than the average speed of a train. This information is shown below in a table. Now we should always read a problem-solving question at least three times, but what we've got is a train and an airplane traveling 800 kilometers. The train is traveling a speed of unknown x. The airplane is six times faster, which we don't know. The time, thinking maybe to our science classes, velocity is distance over time, and if we do a little, I'll think like we're cross multiplying, the, D, um, the v and the t could switch, and we're left with time is a distance over a velocity. There's your distance, there's your velocity, there's your distance, there's your velocity. And it does suggest that to travel this distance, the train requires eight more hours. So the time of the train minus the time of the airplane, time minus time, the difference was eight hours. Here's a quadra here is a rational equation to solve. The average speed to the nearest tenth is. Now the second that it says to the nearest tenth leads me to believe that this is probably not nice factorable numbers, that maybe this will require a calculator. And it doesn't say anything about an algebraic solution. So maybe we can still attempt this one together. So we have an 800 over an x minus an 800 over a 6x that equals an 8. If we multiply all the terms by a 6x, 6x, and a 6x, we can cancel out the x, the x, and the 6. Nope. Nothing cancels out on the side. We're stuck with it all. But in this one, the 6x's can cancel. There we go. So we're left with a 6 times a 8, 4800, minus that 800, equals a 48x. Hopefully this works out quite nicely. 4800 minus 800 is 4000, which equals 48x. 
if we divide both sides by that 48, we end up with 4,000 divided by 48 is 83.3 when rounded to the nearest tenth kilometers per hour. So if this was on the diploma in a written response question, we would say the average speed of the train to the nearest tenth of a kilometer is 83.3. Um, but this is likely a numeric response type answer. So occasionally we will get problem solving questions. This could very well have been um, a more challenging question to sketch and graph. Um, this one worked out to be quite nice. Good luck as we solve rational equations.